Welcome to the Mortgage Brothers Show. I'm Tom Cannell. And I'm Eddie Cannell. This is our fourth podcast, and we're the Mortgage Brothers team here at Signature Home Loans, located right here in Phoenix. Today, we're going to be talking about credit and mortgages. So, Ed, I don't know if there's any particular order we need to go in, but I thought I'd kind of start with a kind of a macro uh, view of mortgages or credit and how they relate to mortgages. Okay. I like it. That sounds good. That sounds so, good. it's really, really interesting for the historians, um, just a 10-second look back, um, the FICO score is actually named after a couple of individuals. Um, and the individuals, um, what was it? I think it was Bill Fair and Earl Isaac actually came up with the FICO score. And it was Fair and Isaac and Company. So that actually has roots that go back quite a ways. I always thought that that was extremely interesting. But when we get callers um, that ask us questions about credit and mortgages, one of the biggest issues we run up against is, I check my credit score and I think it's this, how does it relate to my mortgage? And I always tell them that there's basically three different type uh, credit models out there. There's a consumer model, there's an auto model, and a mortgage model. So they're all different. Uh, They run off of uh, algorithms, but but they're calculated just slightly different. So from a big picture standpoint, the mortgage credit score will be different than the uh, auto or some type of credit card consumer. And I don't know if I've missed anything there. Okay. I mean, that's for... I think that one of the things I think the audience is very familiar with is credit karma or they're, they've logged into their, 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 their chase bank or discover card or their, uh, their visa or, and they have credit monitoring. And so whether you've gone to credit karma, let's just take credit karma. Those are consumer models, right? Those That's are the, right. those are consumer That's models. Right. And so, Everyone who calls us and says they have, oh, I have a 760 score. They're usually telling me they, that's what they've seen on Credit Karma. And so what you're talking about and what we're going to discuss is that is a, that's a consumer model and it's going to be a different algorithm for the mortgage model. That's right. That's right. I will say that when people call and they are looking, they'll ask me, okay, well, if it's a 760 or seven, you know, let's just say it's a 760 at Credit Karma. A mortgage model is actually, it, it, I would say eight out of 10 times more conservative on the scores. So the scores are usually a little lower on mortgage models. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, like that's what we usually see. So whenever I pull a credit report and I tell the person, well, your score was a 740. Oh my gosh, the credit inquiry just hit my you know, your credit inquiry has caused my score to, down, to go down 20 points. And I have to explain to them how credit inquiries are assessed and how that it had, it had little impact because this, the point was I'm pulling a mortgage model. That's right. And, and it, it may, the mortgage model was, may have been right about 740 in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. They actually call that, I think, cluster pooling, where they, the bureaus actually allow consumers to go out and shop. And they say within a 30-day or 45-day period, you've got the ability to go out and have your credit pulled several times without it uh, you know, overly impacting your credit score. So I always thought that that was interesting. Okay. But now, now, there is another what do the credit bureaus say is there's a window of time where you can shop mortgages and it doesn't affect it. It accounts as one inquiry. Well, and that's right. And that would be that, that 30 day. I've also heard 45 day window. So there's a little bit of a debate as to how long that window is. I don't even know if the bureaus know how long it is, uh, but it's between 30 and 45. Is that what you're, you're talking about? Yeah. It's it, two people who are shopping for a mortgage. They go to one bank, they go to another and they're asking, will your inquiry affect my credit score? That's right. That's and you're, right. you're right. I have heard what you said, 30 to 45 days. I've heard 15 days. I mean, and I don't know why we, we don't exactly get a straight answer when we research. I, I tell you, credit, and if you research credit, it's very difficult to get consistent answers. And I, I just, I don't know why. Um, I know that it's complicated of enough, uh, complicated enough of a, of an animal that um, 
and things may end up changing, you know, over the, over the days and weeks and months. So I think it's hard for people to really keep track of what it actually is. So, uh, but from a, a high level, uh, again, credit, we look at mortgage. It's very, very complicated. We don't even get into how it's calculated. A little bit later on in the podcast, we'll talk about what makes up your credit score, but it gets a little bit detailed. So, Ed, I know you want to talk a little bit about how the actual credit score um, impacts some of the costs as it relates to getting a mortgage. Yeah. Okay. So, mortgages, whenever we price a mortgage or look at mortgage options for loan programs, one of the major components is the credit score the okay so and i would say this there's there's the credit score there's the loan amount and then there's the, the value of the home so it's the loan to value like how much equity is in the home how much down payment and the credit score mm -hmm. all right so really credit score is one of the first three questions we're going to ask a borrower when, we, when they when they call us because that's going to affect pricing and where we see credit scores really affecting borrowers is, 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 is with conventional loans, okay? FHA loans, VA loans are, are very tolerant to lower credit scores. Um, and that's not true about conventional. Conventional loans that go to, you know, we call them Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, is conventional loans. They're, they're really advantageous for borrowers with credit scores above 700, and that's kind of the tipping point when I look at, is a borrower going to be going, am I going to be putting them into a FHA loan or conventional? It's going to be whether or not their credit score is more or less uh, higher or lower than 700. And I'm going to also note that when I'm looking at a conventional loan and the borrower has less than 20% down, now they have mortgage insurance. And mortgage insur insurance is extremely affected by credit scores. And I can just give, you, give an example of that. Um, if a borrower, if you have borrower, borrower A has a 760 credit score, his mortgage insurance factor will be four times lower than a borrower with a credit score. Sorry, the, 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 the mortgage insurance rate will be four times lower than the borrower with a 620. Chris. Wow. Wow. That is a big difference. Yeah. It could actually even be higher, but that's just for, to make it simple, four times. Now it's rare that we would ever structure a loan to have a borrower go into a conventional loan with mortgage insurance with, with a low credit score, because we would actually be looking at that FHA loan product. And usually the reason why we would not Let's just say we, we do put them in a conventional loan. It's usually because of the loan amount. FHA loan amounts, loan amounts are capped currently at about three, uh, 314, 314,000. And uh, the conventional loan product's about 484. So <laughs> you're looking at a larger loan amount you're, and you have lower credit scores. Yeah, you're, you're going to be paying for it on the mortgage insurance. You know, and, and if you just ask yourself, like, what is a credit score? Why is it? I think it would simply come down to proving or showing the borrower's ability to repay. It's, it's, it's that simple. You're going to a stranger, you're applying for a loan, they don't know you from Adam, they never will meet you, and they need to assess as to whether or not you're going to repay. It comes down to a number. And I was thinking, boy, wouldn't it be nice if all the kids that our kids dated you know, if they had a number, um, because you, you meet these kids, you, you've, you know, you've never met them before. How do you know what type of a person they are? Yeah, they have like a quality score of a human. Like, yeah, as a human, it, it, this person has a score and the ra there's a range. That, that's right. And if you were to compare mortgages with obviously, <laughs> obviously dating, it's a little bit out there, but there would be a character component to the, the dating but when it comes to mortgages, all we are looking at is just the ability to repay. They don't care if you've been in jail. Uh, they don't, well, I don't want to get too far into that because the algorithms are highly complex and they do try and look at you as a whole person, but it's a whole person as it relates not to, you know, ethics or morality, but just in your ability to repay that loan. Yeah. And they, and a lot of people think that their assets show up in uh, credit reports and they don't, right? It, mm -hmm. If you had a million dollars in the bank, right. the algorithm doesn't care because it doesn't right. see it. 
They don't also care how much money you make. Um, a lot of the, uh, some of the old uh, facets, I don't know if this is actually true or if people just thought it was true, but they thought it was somewhat based on your income. And, and that's not, that's not right. correct. Yes, yeah, so that information is not shared with the bureaus unless there's some conspiracy out there that the bureaus do have it. But uh, it, there's, they tell us no, they don't have any income or assets. So it does not affect score. It's basically how have you been treating the debt you have in your name? Right. Okay. And I thought uh, this would be a little bit worthwhile too. So I looked at a, a quick loan, uh, knowing we were going to get on this podcast and talk about credit mortgages. And I, I looked at a credit score from 620 all the way up to 760, I think it was. And the credits, uh, the actual interest rates uh, varied from 5.3 all the way down to four. And if I had more time, I would have gone in and said, how much more interest or less interest would the better credit score or worse credit score borrower pay over 30 years? And I didn't have time to do that, but I think that'd be a bigger number than we all think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I thought that was yeah, it's a massive, unbelievable. it's a massive hit. It is. Um, it is. Keep in mind, I, we, you know, every, any, everyone in the audience that there are programs we have. If you're, if you have a certain income, you know, eligibility, you, there is, there are programs that are, uh, that we can put you into that are, are friendly um, on the conventional loan product. So if you just don't make any assumptions, just don't assume that you're going to get a, a, you know, a really bad product or a high interest rate, there might be something we can do, but I right. think we're just talking about in general. Yep. Yep. In general. Mm -hmm. um, also, Ed, we talked about kind of breaking up uh, what makes up the credit score. What, what are the oh, different... Before you go there, yeah. I forgot about one more product that we had to mention. Okay. Jumbo loans. Jumbo loans in, in Arizona are really anything above 484000 Jumbo loan yeah, financing, it, 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 again, it's not conventional. It's not government. You know, it is... These are banks who... Um, these are either private or large institutional banks that are giving you the money and they have very strict requirements on credit. And usually those loans require a 700 score. There are some with maybe little lower requirements, but they have a, a higher down payment requirement. But yeah, 700 plus are pretty much required for jumbo financing. Yeah. And we, we run into that a lot. We work with different borrowers, um, work through the application and end up pulling credit only to find out that they're, you know, 698. And yeah, literally, literally two points can make the difference between that jumbo loan working and not working. That's right. Uh, anything else on the uh, kind of interest rate pricing side? Yeah, oh, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, maybe, maybe I just mentioned this, that if, if you are teetering between, if you're a little higher than that, that conventional loan amount limit, we are structuring a lot of loans with uh, combo financing, you know, with a second mortgage behind it, but second mortgages are sensitive to credit scores as well. Uh, but a lot of times that does, uh, it is a good solution that we, that we put together for customers. Right. Okay. Um, also we, we get asked not a lot, but we do get asked, you know, what makes up my credit score? Um, and I thought I would just run through the five different pieces that generally make up your credit score. One is going to be the utilization of uh, the credit that you use. And all the utilization means is what percentage of the credit line that you have do you actually use? Those that use a lot of it um, show that they might depend on that credit and therefore that would drop your, your credit score. So the credit bureaus are looking for low utilization. Example, $1,000 uh, credit line on a credit card. They typically want you not to have any more than $100 to $200 uh, balance at any one time uh, on, your, uh, on your card. Which oh, doesn't seem oh, wait, what's that? So, so what's that ratio or is it? They... Uh, 10, 10 to 20%. Right. 10 to 20%. So if you've got a $2,000 credit card limit, uh, they would tell you that your balance shouldn't be any more than two to $400, which again is, is quite low. Uh, but one of the things we do work with our clients on is if we know they have a purchase coming up or a refi, we'll work with them to get that utilization down low enough prior to pulling credit. And that can be critical. It usually takes us about you know 45 days 30 to 45 days to get that timing right because it's all based upon the cycle of the credit card, but we can walk you through how that works. If for some reason you don't have time to wait, there's also a rapid rescore ability, which is where we pull someone's credit, 
and uh, our uh, kind of semi fancy uh, credit uh, program tells us what you can do to increase your score by a certain amount. So that's a very helpful tool yeah. uh, that, uh, that we should probably brag about one day. Uh, so there's the utilization for credit cards. Uh, the next big piece is the history. How long have you had your credit? Someone that's had it for six months is quite different than someone that's had it uh, six months, uh, six years, I should say. Um, I mentioned the six months because new credit is considered anything six months or more recent. So um, utilization, the history. Uh, next, we have the type of credit. Do you have a good mix of credit? Do you have, uh, you know, auto? Do you have a home? Do you have credit card? Do you have a Macy's charge card? Those are different types of credit, and they like to see a good mix. Um, and then uh, I think actually I, I covered all of them. I said the history. Oh, you know what? I may have gotten mixed up. Uh, the length of credit we talked about, uh, but the history of credit, meaning the actual uh, characteristic of how you've paid. Have you been late? Do you have delinquents? Right. How old are those delinquencies, et cetera? So those are kind of the, 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 the five big groups. I'll just uh, run through them again real quick. Utilization is a big one. Uh, the history, meaning the delinquencies and timing of all your payments is the next biggest one. Then the type of credit or mix, uh, the new credit that you may have um, added, which is going to be six months or, or more recent. And then um, lastly, um, the length of your credit. So have you had this credit, you know, two years, five years, 10 years? So that's your, that's your basic makeup of the credit score. Yeah. And I'm just going to add one thing as just kind of a, maybe a footnote because people, I mean, how, how many times do we hear, we don't want you to pull our credit right now because we don't want that credit inquiry on there. Mm -hmm. um, from what I remember is that, you know, credit inquiries affect the score up no more than 10% of the score. So if you had your credit pulled a thousand times, it would not affect your more than 10% of your score. So usually when people are seeing a score decrease um, or whatever that, that, whatever the amount is, it's usually on account of something's changed on the credit report. But I, I, my, my whole point is I don't want customers looking to get a mortgage to be too afraid about having their credit pulled. That's because, right. Because we can use your credit report in most cases for 120 days. That's four months. So for four months, your pre-approval is good. Uh, don't be, don't be too afraid about having your credit pulled. We know we don't, we don't want to have our, you know, have you, you know, pull your credit multiple times. But again, it's part of consumer. It's a part of a normal consumer's life. You go out there, you get credit. That's right. And it's um, built into the algorithm. Yep. And again, reminder, if we do pull your credit and we find ways to increase it, we've got abilities to do that. Also, all uh, second to last point, credit's like a muscle. You have to exercise it. So credit bureaus don't love the fact that you have no credit. Credit bureaus love the fact that you have credit and you don't use what you could use. So moderation um, and control is what the credit bureaus want to see. Uh, don't cut up your cards. Don't put them in the freezer. Use them. Um, Ed, do you want to talk about our last point, which is what is the easiest way for people to increase their, their credit score? I think that in most cases, the reason why people have higher score or lower scores is because they have like what you just said before is what is the utilization. Usually the simplest way to improve scores is to pay down the revolt, especially the credit card debt. Right. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean paid on time, right? Right. I'm just saying, even if they're paying it on time, fine. But if they need to get their balances down to 20 to 10%, if they're maxing them out, it's right. the easiest and quickest way to get that score up. Now, if it's because they have past history, past lates, those are, those are scars that just get better over time. So those are really, those, those take time. You know, you can't do anything about that. Right. Um, establishing new credit, that takes time. The quickest way is paying down, especially the credit card debt. I agree. I agree. And if you, you know, if you're planning on getting a mortgage, if you pay that off, sometimes it, I would say consult with your loan officer, because your loan officer might tell you, listen, your score's fine. It's not going to affect you on this loan. 
it's better for you to have that asset in your bank versus paying down the debt. But so I would say consult with the loan officer, do, do you know, like, lot, like yeah. we do that a lot, but we'll tell someone, okay, no, it's better for you to have that money in the bank because it's, you know, there's a trade-off. Right. Don't risk the down payment is what we always say. Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like there's a few things we're, we're missing, but I'm sure we'll cover this topic in future podcasts. So um, anything else on your end? That's, oh, I, I would just add one more thing. Do not pay your collections before... It, Talk to your loan officer about that too. Sometimes mm -hmm. paying off a collection can affect your score. Actually paying off a collection can lower your score. Anyway, it's really talk to the loan officer. We'll advise you how that, you know, what we think. It's right. And um, that's, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Well, good. Well, thank you everyone for your time and uh, joining us for this, uh, this fourth podcast. That's right. Be sure to subscribe and you'll be notified of all future episodes. Thank you everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the Mortgage Brothers Show. Please let us know if you have any questions you'd like us to answer on this podcast. You can email your questions to Tom at Tom at azmortgagebrothers.com or yours truly at eddie at azmortgagebrothers.com. And be sure to ask us for a free quote on your next mortgage. Tom and I will personally work with you and help you through the whole process. Signature Home Loans LLC does not provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. This material has been prepared for informational purposes only. You should consult your own tax, legal, and accounting advisor before engaging in any transaction. Signature Home Loans, NMLS 100754, NMLS number 210917 and 161-8695, equal housing lender.